Um, and then let me ask you this also, because with a lot of the anti-Jew, anti-black folks, they also don't like homosexuals. Are, are, do you also dislike homosexuals, or are you gay-friendly? Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not gay-friendly. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you envision and think just what it is homosexuals do, right. if it doesn't make you sick, then you're just as sick as they are. If a person is, let's say, uh, and I've had this in my clinical practice, with people whose uh, families are wealthy, Hmm. Many wealthy people's children go into drugs or homosexuality or heterosexual promiscuity. Hold, hold on a second. So what you're saying, you're comparing choosing to take a life of drugs to choosing to take a life of homosexuality? Is that the comparison that you're making? I think it is a pretty good comparison. It's not identical. There are differences. One's sexual, one is, you know, getting out of the real world. Well, but one is, one you, is, one is, look, an awful lot of people into homosexuality or into drugs and vice versa. Uh, for instance, <laughs> right now, about, oh, seven, eight percent of gays uh, registered as HIV positive got that way because, at least in part, they shot drugs. At least we know they shoot drugs. That's a very, very high proportion compared to people in general. Your brother Jonathan uh, said he would like to put homosexuals to death himself. Isn't that a violation? No, he didn't say that. He said it to he me. Said he didn't say that. He said it to me. He said that, he, that, the, that the death penalty should be invoked for that crime because that's what the penalty was under the law of Moses, God's law. In the U.S., in your opinion, is it more con controversial to be gay and under 18 than gay and over 18? Well, I can see we're probably on opposite sides of this issue, David, but what I can tell you is <laughs> many people, <laughs> and many people uh, simply do not like the idea of affirming homosexuality as, especially as sort of some sort of rigid, inborn characteristic, who you are, right. to young people. And, and in fact, what's happening in a lot of schools is, Schools will get pro-gay affirmation, but they'll never hear the other side of the issue. I didn't know there was another side. Well, I just I thought I just gave you one, which is, for example, that people can leave the lifestyle. I, but I hope you would agree, in the interest of balance and, and impartiality, which our pu public schools are supposed to be, I hope that the kids would also learn that, hey, just as there are people who are proudly gay, there are also people who are proudly out of that lifestyle. The problem is, is that a lot of the... Uh, institutions have sort of bought your propaganda, and they're only <laughs> teaching one side. Right. And I think in the interest of diversity, which your side probably talks a lot more of than my side, in the interest of diversity, they ought to give the other side of the question. So are we all are Muslims, are are all, are all Muslims are. going to hell? Yes. Uh, every, whether they're violent or not? Yes, of course. Okay, and how about Jews? Are Jews going to hell? Yes. Jews are also going to hell. And ho yes. what about homosexuals? Homosexuals also. Okay, who isn't yeah, going to hell? Not, this is this is not my determination. No, I know it's not. Says, it's just Jesus the word says, of God. I understand. This, yeah, this, and this is actually what all Christians either believe or should believe or silently believe or afraid to say something. Hey, let me ask you this: How how old in your experience are people usually when they decide to start being gay? I don't know. I don't have the answer of how old they are. What I can tell you is there are surveys which show that the, the age when people are coming out as gay, as, as openly, homo, openly homosexual, has gone down significantly. I think the average age now is somewhere, you know, in the young teens or younger, perhaps. Hey, who's a bigger threat to our everyday lives, non-Christians or homosexuals? Yikes, you're all, you're all to blame. You're all a horrible threat to yourself. But hold on, hold to on yourself. a second, Shirley. You understand? Your I, destruction is imminent. I'm not trying to get you wound up, but I want to go... You, you're not listening. I'm, I am listening, but I want to, I really want to know, In the, if you knew a gay Jew and you could pick one thing to change, you if, could either make I, them... If I knew... Hold if, on a second. Hold on I a second, know, Shirley. I do know. Hold on. Okay. And, if, and, and you could make them either Christian or you could make them heterosexual. You could only pick one. Just indulge me here. Which would you do? Neither. I want the Jew to be a fag because it shows the wrath of God and his curse upon him. I don't want, I don't have any interest in fixing what God has cursed. It's not my job. I, I want them just like they are. They're called vessels of wrath, fitted to destruction. Chuck, um, I suppose there's always some rare instance where some guy gets tanked up and thinks a boy's a girl or who knows what. But you know, I have to general. say, it just, it, to me, 
We see so many, and I know that in some of in some of the studies that your organization, the Family Research Institute, has done over time, the sample sizes are pretty darn small. I mean, in some cases, you're making assumptions based on a subsample made up of you know 17 people, and when that's the case, one or two people just making stuff up is going to completely throw your numbers off, is it not? Oh, you're correct. And that's true. Uh, unfortunately, you're talking about our estimates regarding homosexual parents. Uh, actually, until just recently, 17 was quite a large number for that kind of research. Well, we would, we would claim that the truth is that homosexuality is about behavior, that it's not an inborn identity. Uh, I've met, in my experience working on this issue for 20 years, probably 50 former homosexuals, <laughs> people who once considered themselves gay and have left the lifestyle. So it's about changeable behavior, which we believe uh, is immoral. And do and people so need I, do people need therapy to change the behavior? Do they just need to say, do, is it a religious thing? Do they need to find well, Jesus? Know, it, 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 there's, I don't think there's a way into homosexuality, one way in. I don't think there's one way out. Two things on that, David. One is your producer should have told me how strongly your pro-gay views were. But that aside, um, listen, we're in a debate here, and I think it's interesting that the people who are doing the censoring in this debate are not the pro-family side, it's the pro-gay side. Um, you know, last Wednesday, they starred Marion Fags in D.C. I know, yeah. And then the same day, they had John Murtha. You know, um, you know who he is? Of course. Okay. They had his memorial. So we had arranged where we were going to be for that memorial, and we get over there, and what do I see right before my eyes? Across the street is the U.S. Supreme Court. I was so happy. I knew it was them because I've picketed when they did the Lawrence versus Texas case. And, and what, did, what did your sign say? My signs, well, you mean for the Mirtha or for the fag marriage? For either. What's your, what's your staple, the big sign, that, the trademark? My, my sign says, God hates fags. Okay. That's what my shirt says, God hates fags. But because you always have to have that. That's the, that's the beginning of this discussion. That's where it all starts, really. Exactly, because when this nation started going the way of Sodom, we said, please, please don't do that 19 years ago, every single day for 19 long, weary years. We have been on the mean streets of this vicious, cruel nation that eats their children and otherwise. So right. anyway, we're, we're saying, please don't do this. Accepting Jesus is not going to be a possibility for me. Is there any other way I can get You're into heaven? You're so funny. About the time that the Lord, your God, pours out upon you <laughs> a spirit of grace and supplication, right. your smart mouth about what you, what is a possibility and is not, will be off the table. But I don't expect him to do that. But, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I hope you are. I really do, because you really you scared me last time. I know, how you dumb brutes prefer your filthy manner of life to heaven. It's an amazing concept. Now, do you go undercover to gay sex clubs? No, I don't. No, I don't. I'll tell you, no matter whether I enjoyed it or not, uh, if one kind of sex with a woman would mean that I could get uh, a deadly disease like this, I'd stop it. And I think most people can. Hmm. But uh, apparently... Uh, we we got something here so compulsive, so compelling. Um, I guess so entertaining. Even here in Chicago, they have gay pride parades in which there's been actually sex acts that have been committed during the pride parade. And I'm wondering, do do gays are gays the only ones who get like sort of the special right to go prancing around naked in the streets, or is that something that's open to all Americans? So you're saying you have not gone undercover to like leather fetish conferences and taken pictures no, I, or gay no, sex in, clubs? When I, when I first started this, when I first started doing this work, um, we we basically are banned from from gay events, from getting the news out, and we wanted to get out stories which we found interesting. Right. I still think it's interesting that major hotels, for example, host leather events, which which promote the most incredibly dangerous and disturbing behavior, and it's sort of treated as if it's sort of a civil rights issue, you know. And we think it's a legitimate story that there is this radicalism in the gay movement. So now, you go that, and that you photograph say, those. That, that is not to say, well, you know, when we when there's an interesting story, photographs are taken. Yes, That's we right. take photographs of the annual Folsom Street Pride, Pride Parade in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's home district, where they actually have thousands of men who walk around nude. We think that's an interesting news story. So I would argue that homosexual activity is so compelling for those who enjoy it. In the same way that sexual activity is compelling for those that enjoy it on a heterosexual level. No, it's more than that. Now, I think you, you did mention this, but of course your organization is pro-family, right? 
Absolutely. Of course. Okay. And Couldn't somebody be gay and Christian? No. They couldn't. Okay. All right. Uh, so tell me, you're also protesting, in addition, on one hand, we've got the Quran burning going on, which is, again, Dove World Outreach Center, certainly an interesting type yes. of outreach. You're also protesting against homosexuality, right? Right. We, right. Look at this data from, for instance, Randy Schultz. Uh, Randy Schultz, acknowledged as one of the best uh, gay historians, he records and exults in the fact that gays have taken over a restroom in the center of the Pentagon <laughs> and use it, he claims, regularly during lunch break for sex. Yeah. Now, I, I haven't been to the Pentagon, don't know, but that he would claim this, and I assume he's being honest. Uh, think about people who are so taken with a particular kind of addiction that they can't stay on the job and uh, do something that... Uh, here and there in the Pentagon, the big place, a lot of folk. I'm yeah. sure there are guys having sex with secretaries in the closets and whatever. Right. But uh, no bathroom has been taken over. None of this has ever been publicized. <laughs> and you'll notice Randy Schultz even has Corridor 6 where you can go and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know if that's still going on. Yeah, I don't know either. Listen, but I do not... know this, that all across, I've talked to a number of people in the military recently, and they say things are getting worse and worse because the, those who are homosexually inclined feel they're going to win this one. And they're going to be able to have sex when they want it, maybe even, maybe even with whom they want it in the, in the military. She's a rebel against God with no cause. When you see the beast putting this woman in office, you got... She's got all the strikes against her she can I handle. wouldn't call her a beast, though. That no, seems... the beast put her in office. Got... Who's the beast? Antichrist Obama. Who are you to, to, to deny them their love? Well, guess what? And you know this, and it's not just gays. It's also like, you know, some Muslims have two wives. There are, there are multiple partner couple, or what, what do you call them, truples? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you know much more about it than I do, Pete. I'll tell well, you. Well, well, let me just ask you. There, there are multiple partner relationships in which they affirm their love for each other. None of so which are who legal. Are we to, who are we to deny? Yeah, but so was gay marriage until about five years ago, right? 